Hey everybody, welcome to Transformers Masterpiece Theater. I'm the Rusty Mechanic, and I thought it'd be interesting to do a comparison of these two figures using Acoustic Wave's Toy Accurate Accessories, and comparing that to um, Hasbro's MP02 Soundwave, uh, which is basically identical to the MP13 mold, with the exception of the fact that this version actually has the Toy Accurate head sculpt. Note the yellow eyes. So let's get into it. Soundwave is extremely light compared to Acoustic Wave, and this just has to do with the amount of die cast that is built into Acoustic Wave. Although both of them do have die cast feet, which is, provide the uh, stability for both figures. Soundwave does have a little bit more wiggle to them, but given that this mold is over two years old, this could just be wear and tear on the joints. The plastic on both is comparable, but Acoustic Wave does feel a bit more durable and stable. Soundwave does more closely match the original toy with the uh, dark blue and uh, silver paint scheme. It does add some creative license uh, with some additional details, um, adding in things like uh, some circles and uh, some additional details here in the, uh, the shins and the forearms. Acoustic Wave, on the other hand, uh, has um, a uh, lighter blue uh, with a white uh, paint scheme, of course, due to the fact that Robot Paradise was opting for the more cartoon-accurate look and then providing all the accessories to add on afterwards to make it more toy-accurate. Both are highly detailed, though, picking up on a lot of the cues from the original toy. There are also some additional details on Soundwave, uh, which are the speaker weapon details that are built into the forearms, um, as well as the details in the buttons like the uh, play, stop, record, and the fast forward and rewind buttons. However, the details on the thighs of a Soundwave are a bit clunky uh, versus Acoustic Wave, uh, whereas the, the thighs on Acoustic Wave are more uh, molded and uh, provide some uh, nice additional details like the uh, silver piping that's going on here. For the alt modes, both have their uh, own uh, details built in, uh, and they're very similar again. Uh, each one does have a dial on the side, and it does uh, rotate, uh, or it does move. And then on the other side, uh, each one of them has a switch. Uh, now on Acoustic Wave, it does not stay up, whereas on Soundwave, it does. And here again seems to be another area where Soundwave does shine as it does have an extra number of sliders and dials and buttons and things on both sides uh, just to add in a little more details to the realism. And I just noticed for the very first time that it looks like he has the port on the side of him that he used in that one episode where he plugged into Teletran 1 to steal a bunch of information. Both have very similar features. Um, they both have weapon storage, although in uh, very different manners. And of course, both have a functioning chest compartment uh, complete with a uh, spring-loaded opening and an eject feature. Again, a bit of a different implementation, but a functioning feature nonetheless. Some advantages for Soundwave here is that it is capable of holding uh, three cassettes uh, compared to the two that can only be held by Acoustic Wave. Um, and the buttons on the front are actually pressable on uh, Soundwave. For Soundwave, he does fit very nicely into the MP scale, which obviously he should since he is an official Masterpiece product. While Acoustic Wave's size is way too big, he's towering over the MP Seekers and Shockwave. For the alt modes, it's difficult to compare the alt modes to anything given that they're not really scaling to anything anyway, but here they are side by side. Transformation for both is very simple and intuitive and a joy to perform. I actually found it interesting that both figures had very similar steps in the transformation process. It's kind of only makes sense since there's only so many ways that you can really get from the robot mode into a brick shape. But it does make me wonder if this wasn't part of the reason why Acoustic Wave took so long and was released under a different company name. Was there too much of a similarity between the two transformations? For the accessories, they're very similar again with Soundwave coming out with just a couple more accessories than Acoustic Wave. Um, they both come with an empty Energon cube that just attaches to their chest compartment. Uh, Soundwave then also comes with some additional accessories that I'm not sure that I would ever use. Uh, he does come with this blaster that can fit on the end of his arm, uh, and it can also be stored on the back. 
And he has another chest compartment accessory that makes it look like some kind of a digital readout when you attach it to the front of his chest. But these again are examples of accessories that refer back to a single moment in a single episode and become part of a collection of items that we have to constantly keep track of. And then his uh, best accessory is the uh, Megatron gun, which fits into his hand uh, very nicely. And uh, despite not having any tab, it actually uh, stays in his hand really well. No real winner here either. The articulation on both figures is pretty much identical with some small differences. Of particular note are the individual articulation of the fingers on Acoustic Wave as opposed to uh, Soundwave who only has one articulated finger and the other three move together on a single uh, pin hinge joint. And Acoustic Wave's knee joint does go well past 90 degrees versus Soundwave's that only does 90. So which one would I pick? When I go back over everything, it does seem like Takeru Tomi and Hasbro uh, have done it better. Uh, Soundwave can hold three cassettes in his chest. He does have more accessories. He does have more details in both modes. And his paint scheme does match the original toy better. Now, for me, Acoustic Wave is going to match that cartoon accuracy that I'm looking for in my collection, but I can definitely see how somebody like Bobby would have chosen Soundwave over Acoustic Wave during his comparison, uh, simply because it seems like Soundwave is standing the test of time, um, and it does uh, do things just a little bit better. But the build quality and the shelf presence of Acoustic Wave is what stands out for me. If I was going to pick one of them based on the toy aesthetic alone, I would still choose Acoustic Wave. That's it everybody. If you've made it this far and you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button down below. It sure helps out a lot. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And please check the links in the description if you'd like to support my channel. There's a link in there for buymeacoffee.com that you can use to support the channel. Also in the description are links to Madhouse Collectibles for all of your Transformer needs. And Mike Lorber, who's a graphic designer, he's the one that created the size scale chart that I use in my videos. Once again, thanks a lot. This has been Transformers Masterpiece Theater. I'm the Rusty Mechanic.